Hey y'all, this is my favorite co invader right here. Uh, he is named Haru, and he's using the basic bitch halberd in the offhand with the main hand washing pull. What the fuck? Crazy, right? I know. Uh, back to that later. A word from our sponsors now. Hello. My name is Ciliati Dogigia. And I have chosen to sponsor this video today in exchange for exposure to all of Mr. Silly Dog's 104 subscribers on YouTube. Today, we will be exploring the lore of Mr. Silly Dog's character. The closest thing he has to a lore build at soul level 133. Mr. Silly Dog's character is named the Crystal Contessa. The Crystal Contessa was born in Lordran, raised as a humble farm girl. However, she quickly rose to the position of a Contessa of Vinheim. She found love. But unfortunately, she had her boyfriend stolen from her by, as she describes her, that bitch Dusk of Ulysil. Driven insane by rage, she died alone as a mad Contessa, owning at least 12 cats. Additionally, before she died, she attempted to link the fire, but she failed. But then, DS3 times rolled around, and the Crystal Contessa was resurrected by the bell for another chance to fulfill her duty and link the fire. However, she ignored her task. Instead, embarking on a quest to invade and destroy everyone who wears the Dusk Crown Ears for both fashion reasons and her own long-held personal vendetta against Dusk. The Crystal Contessa is so incredibly intelligent that she knows that intelligence soft caps pretty hard at 40 on a crystal infusion as well as the Moonlight Greatsword. So she has not leveled up intelligence to the 60 intelligence meme mage build. Additionally, she is so intelligent that she knows that attunement is a really shitty stat for invaders in Dark Souls 3. So she only has 10 attunement, which means she can only fire one pew pew, which she never actually fires because that would require me, I mean her, to hard swap to his staff. And that's way too much time investment simply to fire the equivalent of a black firebomb, except it's even worse because it costs me FP. This has been the lore of the Crystal Contessa. Thank you for taking time to experience with me this deepest lore. Ciliati Dogigia out. Thank you all for listening to that message from our sponsors. I know it was a bit longer than usual commercials, but uh, I'd like to think that your time wasn't totally wasted by it, so uh, hopefully y'all won't be too upset with me for airing such a long commercial. What do y'all think of this invasion, by the way? Uh, this has been a crazy invasion. Probably the closest thing to a... Uh, bullet hell that DS3 invasions get to, unless you count those incredibly rare ganks where there's just like four guys spamming Deep Soul or four guys spamming Great Soul Arrow, which are even more nightmarish. I'm just lucky that the host isn't doing actual damage with uh, her sorceries. Because I'd be probably dead by now. Ah, it's always nice to run into someone who's running a... Uh, fun and to not try hard build quote unquote because they do no damage yeah they do no damage. anyway two dust crown ears in this invasion
which is super nice because it means if I actually manage to hit these people, then I get to do a shit ton of damage to them. Um, unfortunately, I've kind of come to the, to the conclusion that if you're looking to play optimally, there's basically no reason to run a crystal build. Uh, dark builds do too comparable of damage to people wearing dusk crown ears, and when you become a dark crystal build instead of a dark build, um, you're forfeiting your ability to nuke the dark mask in equal, you know, proportionally. And even though it's more fun to nuke the dusk ears simply because it's worse fashion than the dark mask is, um, it's still not worth everything you lose by not be, by being a crystal build, just in terms of raw damage to every other character in the game. So anyway, what else is going on in this invasion? Y'all know me, I am normally a big fan of the green blossoms, even though I almost constantly wear Chloranthi plus three, but I felt like for this invasion, um, it was more important to mitigate all the damage that was coming my way via sorceries than it was to recover stamina. Especially considering that, you know, I'm still wearing Chlorinthi plus three, and considering how passively this party is playing and how hard to get in on they are, um, the opportunities to actually pursue and chase down one individual member of the party are few and far between, so just overall really not worth it over the bug pellets. Bug pellets, if you're not um, aware, are unnerfed in PvP. It's like an 8-10% to decrease in damage, so really worth it. The only drawback is that using a pellet gets rid of the effect of a green blossom and vice versa, so you can't have both. However, in hindsight, looking back on this invasion, um, I realized that I played this basically entirely wrong. I should have swapped from Herald Curved Greatsword and Hand Axe to a uh, Straight Sword or Greatsword long ago. Just something more defensive that doesn't leave me open to be punished by every mage on the planet just for swinging and doing 1R1. Um, I recently had a short discussion with the Mocha Latte on whether Great Swords or Straight Sword and Board was better defensively for invasions. Um, I've kind of come to the conclusion that they're essentially equal. Um, Great Sword shines in a few situations where Straight Sword doesn't, but Straight Sword is just very much superior to Great Sword in terms of just about every other aspect, which means that in terms of optimal play, there's basically no reason to ever use a Great Sword, which is very sad because I do love Great Swords. Though they're better for backstabs than. No, no, they're not even better for backstabs than Straight Swords are. I take it back. Anyway. What do y'all think of my co invader here? Haru, the guy who I said was my, uh, favorite co-invader at the beginning of the video. Is he a beast? I think he's totally a beast. For the, for the record, this invasion started like, I don't know how many minutes ago, but maybe eight, eight-ish minutes ago, and Haru not only <laughs> has been taking on the 2v1 for most of the invasion, while I failed to dispose of one person, um, he's survived for this entire time. All eight minutes. So he's clearly very competent, despite his originally quite unconventional setup that he swapped, you know, crossbow and spear now. But now he's back to Halberd and Spear, which is pretty wonky and unique, so it's interesting. I don't know. I'm always interested to see people with crazy setups who are actually competent in Gang City. Anyway. This invasion will wrap up and then I will go into the uh, story of why this video got made. Um, I have finally finished my first playthrough of Sekiro. And, uh, still playing it because it's still a fun game and I want to platinum it. But I was a little bit burned out on DS3 invasions when I left and I want to make sure that I'm, you know, good and ready before I actually come back. So that first invasion was from sometime back in December, I believe. And this invasion right here. I did one last stream on Twitch before uh, Sekiro released. March 21. And this invasion happened at around, I don't know, 8.40 p.m. Three hours before uh, Sekiro released. I did a few warm-up invasions to make sure I was ready for Gang City that night. Skitter the Perry Heart over there gets absolutely blendered to shit. But, anyway... 
So, who is my co-invader for this invasion but Haru again? And I want to talk about why Haru is my co favorite co-invader. Maybe not my favorite co-invader, like, personally, because, frankly, uh, I know nothing about him personally. But he is still my favorite person to invade with. Um, whenever I see his name pop up as my co-invader, I'm always really pleased. And that's mostly because Haru, to me, represents the original intention of Dark Souls. Dark Souls multiplayer, to be clear. I think the image that Miyazaki originally had has been altered quite a bit in the name of commercialization, in the name of, you know, making it more appealing to a mass market. But I think his original vision for how Dark Souls Online was supposed to work was, I suppose in his own words, um, fleeting moments of helping or hindering another player. Interactions with people who are you are you know, connected with for the briefest of moments, and then they're gone forever. That's what Haru is to me. I don't invade with Haru often, because they are Japanese, and despite my one attempt to send them a message on PSN, they only accept messages from their friends, so that's a no. But when I do invade with Haru, we almost always win. We almost all, we both seem to have a good time. And additionally, I know absolutely nothing about Haru. It's a fleeting interaction. Um, a fleeting moment of jolly invasion cooperation, I guess. So that's why I like invading with Haru more than anyone else. Simply because I have no idea who they are. They're not a member of the community. There are lots of fun people, very competent people, who I like to invade with in our community. But they don't bring the same sense of um, very specific random jolly cooperation that Haru does. Um, I could talk for a little bit about how the role of the Sunbro has become polluted in DS3, um, but that's probably a topic for another video. Kick on Wake Up! If you haven't watched my video on that, do that, because it's it's really good. Maybe the Well, the video isn't good, but the tech is. Stand still, stand still and parry. What a genius. <laughs> Gankers will never change. It's hilarious. Alright, anyway. Time to wrap this up. Record another dub in the, in the uh, history books from me and Haru. And uh, call it good. Be good to one another, y'all. Look at these happy gestures. And there's Fighter PL. <laughs> With the Pontiff Night Curve sword. Anyway. See y'all later. Silly dog out.